Filipina. So, hi everyone again. Uh, welcome to the Tambrella's webinar. I'm going to do a brief introduction, then I will introduce our speaker. We'll then open up for question and answer, and this talk will be recorded and available on our YouTube channel in the next 24 to 48 hours. The Tambrella is a community for underrepresented persons in data science, and we are a nonprofit organization. Um, so here are the people behind the Data Umbrella uh, team. So we have Reshma who's joined us today. Uh, Reshma is from New York and she is a data scientist and statistician. I'm Ray Kanali. I'm from Nairobi, Kenya. I am also a data scientist and statistician. We have a product and we are dedicated to providing a harassment free experience for everyone. So we thank you for helping make this a welcoming and friendly community for all. You can support us uh, in various ways. One is by following a code of conduct and this will help uh, make our community welcoming and collaborative. You can also share data umbrella events with others. You can also contribute to data umbrella through open source. So we have um, various ways. One, we have video timestamps. For example, uh, this video, the video timestamps help make uh, the videos reach more people. So you can go onto our GitHub page and choose a video time, a video, and you can work on the timestamps. And instructions are on the GitHub uh, event transcripts issues. We also have a new website that you're working on. So if you have any skills in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and would like to contribute to open source, you can also head over to our GitHub page, which is a data umbrella and pick an issue on the website. Uh, we also have um, a data umbrella blog. So we are making some updates to the uh, format. And if you have any uh, skills in Markdown, Jekyll, Git, and GitHub, or you're a beginner and you're willing to learn, you can do so by contributing to our uh, uh, open source page. So head over to our GitHub page, which is uh, github.com at umbrella, and you'll find issues and instructions on how you can contribute. You can also donate to an nonprofit. We are on Benevity and uh, Open Collective as Data Umbrella, where you can make um, any donations uh, to us. You can also subscribe to our Data Umbrella YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel has uh, videos to all our past events and other community events that you've participated in. So feel free to go there and subscribe to our YouTube channel and also watch the videos. If you'd also like to watch this video again uh, to this webinar, you can head over there and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We also have different libraries on the YouTube channel. So we have like a library or career advice, which is mainly career advice on data science and tech. We also have a playlist on data visualization, contributing to open source, a scikit-learn, PyMC, and NumPy. We also have a monthly newsletter. So our newsletter is on Substack. So you can subscribe to our newsletter on Substack. We release a newsletter every uh, month. So we promise not to spam you with a lot of emails and uh, feel free to subscribe to the monthly newsletter. We are also welcome to we also welcome suggestions on how we can improve um, our newsletter or any worthy information or job opportunities you have or would like to share with our members. We also have resources on our website, which is on dataumbrella.org. Uh, our resources include this to conferences, open source guidelines to inclusive language and allyship, burnout, AI ethics, and more. We are on all social media platforms, so you can find us on LinkedIn, Twitter. We also have a job board, so if you're interested in jobs related to um, data science, machine learning, and AI, we always share that. We are on GitHub. We are also on YouTube and Substack, so you can scan our QR code uh, to follow us. We also have a live captioning for this event. So if you'd like to use the live captioning, we have the button on the top of your screen, which has been labeled CC. So if you're watching this uh, live, you can use the closed captioning um, to make it easier for you. We also have an online suggestion form. So the online suggestion form, a link will be shared on the hands out section where you can give us feedback 
like suggestions for future event topics, feedback to this event, a technical issues in case of any or any other feedback. If you also would like to present to the Data Umbrella community, you can also uh, give a suggestion on the talk that you'd like to present and we will get back to you. We have two upcoming events in August. So one would be on tracking COVID-19 where we will be dealing with challenges on how to handle and how to handle them, especially challenges to do with missing information. And on August 15th, we'll have an event on blockchain for open source solutions. So you can sign up for events on our meetup page, um, which is uh, meetup.com at the umbrella events. We have uh, all our events listed there for uh, your, you can RSVP there and you'll get all the information to how, on how to join them. So on today's talk, so today's talk will be on machine learning visualization using uh, yellow brick. And our presenter today is Kavengi Kitonga. Kavengi Kitonga is a storyteller. She enjoys using data and statistical software to draw data insights. At present, uh, Kavengi is associated with the University of Nairobi here in Kenya, the Department of Agricultural Economics as a PhD candidate. You can follow Gitonga on LinkedIn and GitHub. These slides will also be shared on the handout section. And with that, I will let uh, Kavengi Gitonga take over uh, the webinar and present to us. Thank you. Welcome, Kavengi. Uh, good evening. My name is Kavenki Kitonga. Um, good evening from Nairobi. I'm excited to be here to give this talk on yellow brick um, visual, visualization with yellow brick. I'd like to thank uh, Data Umbrella for the opportunity. And I'll just start off with a brief history of myself. Um, my background is actually in the social sciences, agricultural economics. But um, I developed an interest in machine learning and open source um, programming languages last year. So I started off in R. Then afterwards, I took a course in data science with Python. And that got me on the machine learning track. And that's how I started this journey. So just a brief overview of how I got into Yellow Brick. I just remember that um, I was working through a tutorial and I thought to myself, there's got to be be an easier way of, um, you know, coming up with these visualizations apart from working with Matplotlib. So a random search through the internet got me into the Yellow Brick Library, and since then I've kept on discovering different visualizations that the library offers. So today we'll just go through a classification problem, but before that I'll give an overview of the library. So I'll start off by sharing my screen for my presentation, and then after that, we can get into the code. Um, is my screen, um, can you see my screen? Mm, it's loading. Um, yeah, we can see your screen now. Okay, so this is the presentation, Machine Learning Visualization with Yellow Brick. As I said earlier, my name is Kavengi Kitonga, and I'd like to extend my appreciation to Data Umbrella. So I'll just start by giving an overview of what Yellow Brick is. Um, Yellow Brick is a machine learning visualization um, library in Python. And um, it's a, it offers a very convenient way of adding visualizers in your machine learning workflow. I like the introduction to Yellow Brick. So Yellow Brick is a machine learning visualization library in Python. And um, it offers a very convenient way to include visualizers in your machine learning workflow. And I was saying earlier that I feel like it offers, you know, it breathes life into the, into the saying that a picture is worth a, a, um, a thousand words. So using this library, you're able to come up with visualizers at different points of your machine learning workflow. That is at evaluation, also during hyperparameter tuning, and also uh, during model selection. So the library has two dependencies, the scikit-learn and matplotlib. So if you're installing the library, um, this would have to be installed along them if you don't have them. 
Um, it's also used inside Jupyter notebooks alongside Panda data frames, but also can be used with other IDEs such as Spider. I've used them in both and it works very well. Now, when it comes to installation, the recommended installation as per the documentation in yellow brick is just through pip install yellow brick and then you can upgrade to the same thing just with the addition of the u if you're using a python distribution such as anaconda then that would be the way to install it and as i mentioned earlier you can use it um, in your jupyter notebook and also spider if that's what you're using to operate um uh, python for analysis so the thing with this library is that um, it works very well with, well with Skitlan and it uses a similar workflow to Skitlan. So we have the visualizer object, which is the primary interface when um, working with this library. And so with the visualizer, as we will see through the workbook, the notebook, works in a similar way to a Skitlan workflow, whereby you will import the visualizer, you will instantiate it and then fit and finally show it. And then you can pass tweaks during the instantiation of the uh, visualizer, similar to a Skitlan workflow where, for example, if you were to work with a logistic regression or a random forest class classifier, you could um, pass some modifications in the, in the instantiation of the model. So it works in a similar way. And then um, the two main stars here are the feature and the, and the feature and the target. So with a target, um, it can take a pandas data frame, it can take a numpy array or a Python list of lists. And the same thing with um, panda with the target, it can take on a panda series, a numpy array, or a Python list. So also Although um, Pandas and NumPy are not imported during uh, the importation of yellow brick, it's, um, it's important to have them when you're working with Panda, when you're working with data frames or arrays um, with this particular library. And so there are quite a number of visualizers. We have feature visualizers, we have target visualizers, there are regression visualizers, there are classification visualizers, clustering, model selection visualizers, and text modeling visualizers. So there are quite a number of visualizers that you can incorporate in your workflow, depending on the machine learning problem that you're solving. So for example, in our particular um, lesson today, we'll, use a, we'll go through a classification uh, problem so I'm going to incorporate um, a few of the classification visualizers available with this library. Otherwise, after the conclusion of this presentation, you can feel free to go to the website and explore the other visualization, visualizers that are available depending on the problem that you're solving. And then just um, to conclude, there is an aspect of contribution and that's um, the link to the contribution. And then we also have the yellow brick um, library itself. That's also a link to it. And this um, documentation will be available afterwards. So you'll be able to explore more and see the gems in this library. So just before I get into my notebook, this is um, the yellow brick um, library. So you can see just this is um, the welcome page and you have the site here which offers a quick start to getting familiar with the library. And it offers information about the dependencies that you would need um, with this library and just gives a beautiful um, introduction to that. And then once you have that, you also have the model selection tutorial this is a guide through the different um, amenities in the library. And then you have the visualizers and the API. So for example, um, the library comes with example data sets. There are quite a number. 
and then the list of the visualizers. So these are the ones that I mentioned in my presentation. We have the feature analysis visualizers. We have the target visualizers. We have the regression visualizers, the classification visualizers. Um, that will be the focus for today. There are also clustering visualizers, model selection visualizers, and text modeling visualizers. So there are quite a number of visualizers available for the sort of um, problem that you'd want to handle. And then when I spoke about um, the amenities or the different ways in which you can tweak the model, I'll give an example here simply with, um, for example, a visualizer on the classification report. So this is a visualizer that is a classification report once you conclude your instantiation of the model. And then just down here, you get to see um, the different tweaks, you know, um, what comes into the parameters and then the other allowances, you have the color bar, you can tweak the color bar, you can tweak the font size, you can tweak the force model. So for each of these um, visualizers, there are different tweaks that you can explore apart from the basic default. And then um, there's an opportunity to contribute. So in the contribution, this is where you can contribute to the library in different ways. Um, personally, that's my next step. I took um, to this library this year. So I'd like to really build up on this. So there's a contribution page and a direct link to the GitHub. And then from there, there's the gallery where you can explore different um, visualizations and contributions, depending on you know, what you'd like to understand. And so that's just about it. One thing I can mention also is we have the one-liners, which you will see through the, um, the notebook. So with this particular library, there are two ways of visualizing the visualizer. The one-liners is a quick method, and then we have a slightly longer method that follows the skitland um, flow, you know, the instantiation, followed by the fitting, and then the show. But with the one liner, it's all that is implemented in one line. So, but don't worry about it. Um, I'll go straight to my notebook and we'll be able to go through a classification problem. So this is my notebook. And um, the first, um, so just to run through the presentation, this is a classification problem and it's based on um, an inbuilt data set in yellow brick that is looking at the room occupancy based on a few features. So the first step is that I'll import um, libraries. So I'm going to import pandas because we'll be working with our pandas and data, we'll be working with data frames. I imported NumPy, but I won't use it today, but I think sometimes also as you get, it's just natural for me to do it. And then I imported the warnings and finally, I started off with importing the data set. Um, I would have preferred to import everything here, but I think because we're just going through the library amenities, I'll import the different um, data yellow brick um, amenities, depending on the sort of um, visualizer we'd want to show for easier following. So the first step, I imported this data, and this is an inbuilt data brick data set, yellow brick data set. And um, this data set is on occupancy, whereby if a room was occupied, that's one, and if not, that's zero. And uh, a few features, which we'll explore with um, the info. So here I have um, data overview. And just before that, so if you're using inbuilt, um, the inbuilt data sets, this is how you would load it. So this is the feature, and this is the target, and this is the particular data set that we are looking at. That's load occupancy. So we'll just go through a few preliminaries of the data. So I ran the info for both the target and the feature. So there are 20,560 entries, and for the feature, for the feature 
the data frame we have five features that's temperature relative humidity light carbon dioxide and humidity and this is a, a data frame and then we have the target so the target is a series and um just um to get a feel of what the data looks like so these are the first five observations that i ran with the dot head so you can see that we have these are the features we're dealing with the temperature the relative humidity the light the carbon dioxide and the humidity and then i'm um, just taking the value counts for the target so we can see that for room occupancy rooms that were occupied we have 4,750 observations, whereas for the non-occupied um, instance, we have 15,810 observations. So that's just a brief overview of the data set. And then now we can move on to just look at what visualizers are available when dealing with that classification problem. So the first visualizer that I, I will elaborate on today is the class balance visualizer. So with the class balance visualizer, it just enables us to look at the frequency distribution of the target variable among the classes. So in this case, we have two classes. We have the not occupied and we have the occupied. So this is what we were talking about. So in this particular instance, the first case, we're going to visualize the target distribution before splitting the data set into the train and test. And to do that, there are two ways. So we have the long method, and this is what I was talking about, that you, you're able to see the familiarity with the skit learn workflow. So what happens is that from the yellow brick library, we are going to get into the target and import class balance. And then the next step is to instantiate the visualizer. So this is what we are saying, the visualizer object. So we instantiate it with class balance. And in this case, we're going to put two labels, not occupied for the zero class and occupied for, for the positive class. So once we instantiate the visualizer, we fit it. And in this case, we fit it to the target. And then after that, we show. So this is the long method. In the quick method, um, we do a similar thing where we import um, from the same module, but now what you notice between the quick method and the short method is this just a change of um, the case and also an underscore. So you notice for the long method, we have the class balance and um, the C and the B are capitalized, but in the small, um, in the quick method, is just a separation with an underscore and they're both not capitalized. So this is, in this particular case, what happens is that everything is fitted. You have the visualizer, you have the class balance, you have the target Y, you have the labels, and then this workflow happens in the background. So when you run that, this is what both methods will lead to this visualization. So now you're able to look at the balance and to observe that for the not occupied, these are the number, this is the frequency. And then for the occupied, this is the frequency. So basically what this does is that it gives us just a visual overview of the target, um, the distribution across classes. So that's the class balance visualizer. You can also incorporate it in the second case after splitting and testing your data set, um, splitting your data set into tests. So what happens is that in this particular case, I split my data set from, so this was done through Skitlan. So you have the model selection and then you import the train test split. So I performed the split. So I have, a, um, I have the train, the test, the train for the target and the test. So you come here once again, just a similar workflow, and this is the visualization. So in this case now, since we have both the train and the test, this is what um, happens. So you're going to import the, the class balance in the long method, you will instantiate it, but now you fit in both the train and the test 
for the target and then show. With a short method, you're going to pass that all in one go. You'll import class balance, but um, the lowercase with an underscore, and you pass both your train and your test. So this is what the visualizer looks like when you have both a train and a test. So it shows the distribution within the test, the train, the train, um, it shows the distribution of the target within the train set and also the distribution within the test. So you can cooperate them at both stages, before splitting and under splitting, after splitting. So that's the class balance visualizer. Another interesting visualizer is the feature correlation visualizer. So the purpose of this visualizer is that it identifies features with a high correlation with the target variable. So with this particular visualizer, we follow the same workflow. There's the long method and there's a quick method. So from yellowbrick.target, you're going to import feature correlation. But because this is a classification problem, the specification for the method is mutual info class classification. So we instantiate the visualizer in this step, and then we fit it. So when we fit this, we'll fit it on the train for the, this is the feature, you start off with the feature and then the target. So it's just a similar work, uh, workflow to Skitland where you pass the train first, the feature data frame, and then you pass the target and then you show. So that's the long method, instantiate fit show. With a short method, just a similar thing, you have this in lowercase, separated by an underscore. So if you want to use the short method, you will instantiate the visualizer, you will pass the train um, data frame for the feature, followed by that of the target, and you will specify the method as mutual info classification. So this is the output for that. So this would be what it would display that we have humidity, we have CO2, we have light, relative humidity and temperature. So those are each of the features in our data frame. And this is their contribution, their correlation with the target. So that would be the display for that. So this is the feature correlation. And the purpose of that, like I mentioned, was just to see which features would have a high correlation with the target variable. So this is the available visualizer in the yellow brick library to visualize that. Another interesting visualizer is the classification report. So the purpose of this visualizer is to perform an evaluation of your model. So for the purpose of today, I'll keep it simple. We'll import a logistic regression. So what happens is that you will, in, you will import the model from Iskitlan and instantiate it. So any model that you're running, would you import it from Skitland and instantiate it. So my first step here is to import the logistic regression and then I instantiate it. Now, once you instantiate the model, we have the sim a similar workflow. We have the long method and we have the quick method. So to visualize our classification reports, we are going to go to the yellow brick under classifier and import the classification report. So one thing you notice also is that um, the, the names are slightly easy to remember because for example, with the target for the class balance, it was yellow brick dot target. So in this case, for the for you know finding out how well our classifier did, you'd go to yellow brick dot classifier and import the classification report. So you notice in this case, C and R are capitalized, and this is for the long method. Now, once you import the classifier, then you will instantiate the visualizer. And instantiating the visualizer, the first step would be to pass your model. So this is the logistic regression that we passed on here. And then you're going to specify your classes. So you don't have to do this. It would appear as zero and one, but just for following and keeping up, it would be good to sig signal what they mean. So that's why I prefer to put it, but otherwise it's not mandatory. So I pass the classes as not occupied, 
are signified by zero and occupied by one. Now, once you do that, you pass your model, you pass your classes, and you indicate support true. If you don't indicate support true, then it won't show the, the last aspect here. Um, this is the support. That is the number of observations, but otherwise it's not mandatory, but I indicated it as true. So here is, this is where we are. So once we do that, we now fit. We pass our train data set, but we pass our data frame, the feature data frame, and then we pass our target, the train. And then after that, we score. We score on our test data set, and then we, in, we display the visualizer. So you just notice it's a similar workflow with, um, to Skitlan, you instantiate the model, you instantiate the visualizer, you pass the train um, data frame, and then you pass the test and then you finally show now similarly there's a quick method for that and with a quick method we'll still import from yellowbrick.classifier but you're going to use um it's going to be lowercase and separated by the underscore so the same thing is that you're going to instantiate fit and show in just one syntax so you pass your model you pass your train um, for the feature, you're trained for the target, the test, um, both for the feature and the target, and then your classes that you label and support true. And so this is what you should be you should be able to visualize. So this is um, a classification report for our logistic model. So you have the metrics that you'd commonly look at, the precision, the recall, the F1, and the support, just similar to a classification report in Skidland, but now this is the pictorial representation of it. Um, then we move on to uh, the confusion matrix. There's also an allowance for that within the library. And to do this, you would still be importing from yellowbrick.classifier, but this time you import the confusion matrix. So you notice that um, it's they, they make it slightly easy to remember because yellow brick is the library you're evaluating your classifier and you're importing a confusion matrix so it's easy to with time to just um, internalize it and it follows a similar workflow you're going to instantiate your model you're going to pass the confusion matrix um, specify your model so in this case it was a logistic regression but it can be any other classifier. Then you have the classes, the not occupied and the occupied. Then from there you fit it to your data. So this is the feature data frame and this is the target. Then you score it on your test and you show. So that's the quick method. For the short method, you have a similar importation only that this is now separated as an underscore and it's in lowercase. So you're going to pass um, this um, visualizer in one the one liner. So you have, you instantiate it, you fit it and you show. So you pass your model, you pass your train, you pass your test as well, and the classes. So here now, this is what your confusion matrix should look like once um, you 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 instantiate fit and show so this is the display that you'd expect um, using the yellow brick visualizer so that's for the confusion matrix and then we have the receiver operating curve so the receiver operating curve helps us to evaluate how well our model is doing at different thresholds so within the yellow brick library it's also pretty easy to remember. So we have two ways, like we just said, there's the long method, and then there's the quick method through the one-liner. So from yellow brick, still from classifier, you're going to uh, import the receiver operating cup. You're going to instantiate it. So we have the instantiation here. You pass your model, you plus your classes, it's, um, it's optional. And then once you do that, you fit it to your train data. 
then you score it on your test and you show. And the one line up for that is this is the quick method. So you're going to yellow brick dot classifier. Similarly, it's um, in lowercase separated by an underscore. And the one liner for this would be that you'd instantiate it here, pass your model, your train, and your, your train both for the feature and the target. And then the test, um, you specify that. And also the test for the target, you specify that. And your classes, that's optional. And then micro false, macro false. I'll show you how that works out. Those are some of the tweaks I was talking about. So this is what you would be expecting um, with that particular in, uh, fitting. So you'd have your, uh, this is the display. Then you have the ROC of the class not at right, of the class at right, the micro average, the macro average. So now if I put false, just for demonstration of the tweaks that you would do, is that you would not expect to see these two below. So, so that was, so the, the, the display here are only these metrics. So as you get acquainted with the library, you can tweak deciding on what you'd want to display. Um, this is pretty neat, but uh, when I was working with it on some other data set, it was really a little bit cloudy. That's why I experimented with suppressing the micro and the macro. So that's that for the receiver uh, operating curve. And then we have the precision recall curve. So the library also has an allowance for that. And with this, you know, the purpose would be to plot the trade-offs between the precision and the recall and see how that fares at different probability thresholds. So similar workflow, there's a long method and there's a quick method. So you notice it's also pretty easy. From yellow brick classifier, you're going to import the precision recall curve. And then once you do that, similarly, you will instantiate um, the visualizer, pass your model, and then you're going to fit it on the train for both the feature and the target. You will score it on the test, both for the feature and the target, and then you will show. Now with the short method, you have the one liner that does all this in the background. So for that, you're going to um, import still from the classifier, but now the precision recall curve, you can see, separated by an underscore and um, in lowercase. So once you do that, you instantiate it. At the same time, you pass your model, you pass your data frames in the order of train, both for the feature and the target, and then test. And then this is what you would expect to see. Um, for the precision recall curve. This is the visualizer that you'd expect to see with the yellow brick library. And then we have the discrimination threshold. So this, um, the purpose of this is to demonstrate the relationship between the thresholds and the four metrics. That's the precision, that's the recall, um, the F1, and so, and to determine the optimal threshold. So how we would do that with this particular library is that we still have a long method and a short method. So from yellow brick still under classifier, very um, easy to remember you have import discrimination threshold. So just capitalize the first, um, the first letters for the long method. So we instantiate our visualizer we pass our model, after that we fit it to the train and then we show. And then similarly with the short method, the one liner is that we will import it, but just there's a slight modification here for this one liner, whereby we have yellow brick followed by classifier then threshold, then just import it in a similar manner, that's with the underscore. So here we'll pass we pass a one liner where we we with a one liner with everything so we instantiate it through this we pass our logistic regression then we have the train for the feature and the target and so with um, the discrimination threshold this is the visualizer that you would be expecting to see and so 
we are um so this the visualizer that you'd be expecting to see with this particular discrimination threshold so that concludes um you know just this quick practical session on that i'll say asante in kiswahili and i'll be able to take any questions or any observations and i invite you to explore more visualizers in in this vast library thank you Um, thank you so much, uh, Kevin, for your presentation. It was really good. Uh, we have some questions in the question and answer tab. Um, we also encourage the audience, if you have any question, please leave it in the chat. Uh, we still have some time to answer the questions, so I can read uh, some of the questions that are here. So the first question is, um, how did you get, uh, how did you first become involved with Yellow Brick or begin using that uh, as a library? So how I got involved, um, it was pretty accidental. I took a data science course last year and I was going through the practice notebook. Then I noticed there were so many, um, well, I feel like I could say hoops that I had to skip before I could actually um, realize a visualiz visualization just within Matplotlib. So that's what um, got me to just Google and think, is there an easier way that I could display these visualizers? An easier way for me to remember and convenient. So that's how I just Googled and I just found Yellow Brick. It started off with a clustering problem. I was doing some unsupervised learning notebook and then that's when I got really interested when I saw the other provisions with the classification problems and the regression. So I'd say it was pretty accidental in the form of practice, but also me looking for, I'm always in the group of, if there's a library that can help both in R and Python, I'll latch onto it if it can get me to my destination, yeah. Yeah, the next question would be, can the visualization be used with Lama 2s as well? Um, yeah, I think right now because uh, the Lamas are a, a, a great uh, thing in the open source uh, large language models. So do you have an idea if it can be used there as well? So when I checked, uh, when I checked um, the homepage, which I think I can come here, I don't see an allowance for that yet in terms of the visualizers that they have, because these are all the visualizers that they have, but they kept on talking about the fact that, um, you know, it's a continuous, it's a con they continuously update. And I think that could also be an avenue to actually start contributing to that. But at present, these are actually the available um, visualizers on the home page. But I think that's an important avenue to consider and be a contributor. Yeah. Um, the next question is, what packages other than Pandas or Python is Yellowbrick compatible with? Can it be used with Julia? No, that I don't know yet. And looking through the, um, the documentation, not yet. Not yet. It's still within um it's still within Python. I didn't see anything on Julia yet. Okay. Um also we went straight into the machine learning. What is Yellow Brick's ability in the EDA space? Like yeah, exploratory data analysis. How can Yellow Brick be used there? So for example, in this particular um Plus, I realized that um, with the classification problem, yes, it's true, we went right into the visualizers, but I noticed, especially with the regression visualizers, they have a lot of allowances. They have different um, visualizers even before you get into fitting the regression. So even just, um, let me just look here, just generally, they have some, they have certain feature analysis visualizers that can be exploited before do, you know, you get, you get to the actual modeling. 
but I also realized you can still incorporate that with, you can still um, work with Seaborn and Matt Portley for in conjunction with these visualizers. I find that this library is more convenient when you start on the workflow of, you know, feature selection, um, instantiating your model and seeing how it's doing. So it's more on that as opposed to the basic exploratory, exploratory data analysis that you would do with Seaborn and Matt Plotley. Okay, the next question is, uh, is the confusion matrix presuming a threshold cutoff of 0 0.5? And is there a way to set it to something else? Oh, yeah, so you can do that. You can set the, you can do that. And it's only that sometimes um, the time would not allow, but I'd actually want to upload a more elaborate um, notebook on my, on my GitHub. But I also noticed the allowances for that in the tweaks, in the tweaks of each of the visualizers, their allowances to play around with that threshold um, for the, um, to visualize the, the confusion matrix, depending on the tweaks you make to your model, yeah. Yeah, okay, the next question is, can you pass more than one models for comparing uh, different models on visuals? Yes, you can. Actually, today I, I just kept it very, very simple. But even just within the within the example page for the classification, um, there are quite a number of. Um, there are quite actually. Tell me that I think now, in a little bit of a hurry. No, no but it should, we should be able to do it. There are quite a number of visualizers that you can fit through a pipeline. I mean, a number of models that you can fit through a pipeline and evaluate how well they're doing. And I saw that. <laughs> I saw that today. It's just that I think now I'm, I'm on the work gear. But yes, you can do that. Through incorporating a pipeline, you can do that and evaluate different, um, different visualize different, the performance of different models. Yeah, uh, those were all our questions. We also have some comments. Edwin says, great presentation. You've made Yellow Brick look fun, easy, and a master library for everyone in machine learning. Thank you. So thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, OK, we have one more question. Uh, how long did it take you to be effective in Yellow Brick? And can you please share your success story soon? Yeah. Oh, so. Because um, I find it to be a very easy library and easy, not easy because the instructions are very straightforward. So once you just you have a hang of the Skitlan workflow, it's um, very easy to follow along. You just come, you know, they, they have the quick start page that gives you a nice introduction to it and step by step instructions. So depending on what you're doing, just a little bit of practice, but it's pretty easy to follow along. Oh, and you asked about success story, or what? Um, I think the latter. Yeah, question yeah. The question was, how long did it take you to be effective in Yellow Brick? And can you please share your success story? Yeah. So maybe they just want to know how long did it take you to like maybe be comfortable with using Yellow Brick. Um, it's just not too long, but it, it's more of practice. Not too long, it's more of practice. And my success story is that when I compare, um, you know, doing this um, in much short leave and doing this in a few seconds, it's very easy with um, Yellow Brick to bring those visualizers to life. I feel like... Um, you know, if just doing it in MathPlotlib, you'd have to do a lot of looping for that just to instantiate one visualizer. But then here, yeah, it's um, it's a pretty quick method and very nice also for beginner students of machine learning to see the visualizations come to life. So I just say practice makes perfect and enthusiasm, and also because I like pictures, so that's an easy way to learn. But practice makes perfect and with no time you'll be on your way yeah thank you everyone uh for joining us today thank you Kavengi, for the good talk and for introducing to to us yellow brick for most of us it's more of an introduction on how we can use yellow brick 
Um, as we said before, the video will be available on our YouTube channel in the next 24 to 48 hours. So feel free to watch it again. And you can also pick it up and do the video timestamps if you're interested. Um, so yeah, thank you so much, everyone. And good night or good day, depending on which time zone you're at. Thank you so much, too. And thank you to Data Umbrella. Have a good evening.